Thanks for joining us on the NBC Connecticut YouTube channel. We're talking face the facts this morning and impeachment. Joining me right now in studio is William Dunlap. He's a professor of constitutional law and national security at Quinnipiac. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh, first and foremost, we had um, the fourth, I believe, the fourth occasion in U.S. history that a president was talked about as far as impeachment is concerned, right? At least the fourth. There may have been talk about others as well, but nothing actually happened. When Nancy Pelosi came out and made her announcement, she had been reticent to go down this path, regardless of the fact mounting numbers of Democrats decided they wanted to push her to do it. When she came out in front of the cameras and said, now is the time, what was your impression that day? I was a little surprised because I thought she would continue to stand firm for a while. Uh, there were investigations relating to impeachment already going on. Right. And frankly, I thought that they would simply turn this over to the Intelligence Committee and say, what do you make of this? But I think that the members of the Democratic caucus had gotten so upset uh, at what they think is going on there that she got pushed into this. So at issue was the phone call between President Trump and the brand new president of Ukraine. The allegations are that President Trump asked him for help in opposition research on Joe Biden and his son. Uh, that apparently was investigated by several outlets in Ukraine, and that was proved to be nothing. But the conversation is troublesome when we see the release of the comments. Why is it troublesome, do you think? Well, if it is actually the president suggesting to the president of the Ukraine that you will not get this aid that you just asked for unless you help me get this information on the son of a political opponent of mine, that is extremely troubling. It's corruption on some level, and it is also, if, if that's exactly what happened, it, it's the president of the United States asking for assistance from a foreign government to interfere or at least help with a political campaign in the United States. And that is illegal, and it is highly undemocratic. As we read the whistleblower's report and saw the releases connected to it, he or she specifically admitted Listen, I didn't get firsthand knowledge of this. I did this by interviewing several members of the White House over a significant period of time, over months, mm -hmm. uh, regarding that phone call and then other instances that were similar. Is it problematic that the information was secondhand with the investigation moving forward? Well, that's the information we have so far. Now the impeachment process has started. That transcript and the uh, whistleblower's report are going to be turned over to several Com committees in the House of Representatives, and they will look into it and see what they can get in f terms of firsthand information. This is not the beginnings of investigations of President Trump regarding impeachment proceedings, or at least heading down that path. Mr. Nadler had already started some of those investigations. What happens now? How many committees are going to continue their investigations, and what are the next couple of steps? My understanding is that this has been turned over to six different committees, each one looking at uh, claims or charges w within the scope of their jurisdiction. Ordinarily, this goes to the Judiciary Committee, but I think partly because there's such a wide range of charges here. And also because I think they would prefer to get it over with and have six committees working on it simultaneously. They've gone this unusual route. Articles impeachment can get drafted. We've already seen the possibility of more than 220 uh, representatives are signing on say, look, we believe this inquiry should go forward. If it gets to the Senate, what happens next? When does the Senate receive the articles of impeachment, and then what do they do with them? The Senate will receive the articles very shortly after they're approved by the House, okay. if, in fact, they're approved by the House. Okay. Uh, some members of the House, probably members of those committees that are doing the investigation and drafting the charges, uh, will be the House managers. They'll effectively be the prosecutors in the Senate. The Chief Justice of the United States, under the Constitution, will preside over the trial. The senators who participate will take an oath, uh, which is prescribed. It's required by the Constitution, and it's written from time to time uh, by the Senate. But they will take an oath to give uh, justice, impartial justice. Okay. And they will hear the evidence, and they will decide two things. One, did the president actually do these things? Mm -hmm. And if the president did them, do they rise to the level of impeachable offenses? Moving forward, uh, I've read that it takes a supermajority vote from the Senate to remove the president from office. If it gets that far, is that likely? 
Uh, I think a supermajority vote at this time looks highly unlikely. It would require two-thirds of the Senate, which would mean almost half the Republicans would have to vote with all of the Democrats. And at the moment, I don't see that happening. But if information comes out, uh, during these investigations that he actually was encouraging or essentially blackmailing the president of the Ukraine into helping his political campaign, that could change public opinion and that could change the opinion of some Republican senators. Professor William Dunlap, we appreciate your expertise this morning. Thank you for joining us. And we have a whole lot more on our YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us on Face the Facts. I'm Mike Heideck. Click on a few more. This is Face the Facts with NBC Connect. Connecticut.